Saw 3 is mainly a film that is about forgiveness. This time, Jigsaw is on his literal and metaphorical deathbed. He's going insane as he always is, so he enlists the help of Dr. Lin. Here, Amanda, who we found in the last film, was working with Jigsaw. Was apparently working with him a lot more than we previously thought, because wow, she's a lot more involved this time. And throughout the entire series, actually, from 1 to 3, so this is kind of crazy. And this whole thing is mainly about this grieving father who has just lost his son to a drunk driver. Him and his wife have been kind of on the ropes. Dr. Lin was his wife. She also was one of the first people who told Jigsaw, Tobin Bell, that he was going to die. <laughs> John Craver. And so, yeah, this movie's about him forgiving the people who wronged him and like the judge, the person who actually killed his son with, in the drug driving accident, one of the bystanders who did nothing about it, and yeah. So how do I feel about Saw 3? Well, <laughs> I am feeling fatigue with this series, that's all I can say after this one. This movie, it has a lot, and I do mean a lot, going on, whether good or bad. Um, but there's a lot going on here, and this has sadly become exactly what the first movie really was. The second movie leaned into it a little bit, but it wasn't fully that story that I feel like was really at the center. Here, it just feels like the traps and the torture porn aspect was right in the middle of the film, and it just doesn't really make for an interesting watch for me because I don't like that kind of stuff. You might be saying, well, why are you going to Saw movies? Well, because... I wanted to give these movies another shot, like I said. I haven't seen most of these in a very long time. When I saw them at first, I loved them. I thought the stories were great. <laughs> and this movie fits anywhere to tell what the rest of this series is going for. Oh god, am I not looking forward to it. So let's get into Saw 3. This movie starts out with Detective Matthews breaking out of his chain, literally by breaking his foot, and leaving the place, presumably, we think he does. From there, we meet our main characters from the last movies, um, Carrie, who is a detective, who I didn't really talk about in the interviews, she's in this series from 1, 2, 3, I believe, so, yeah, she's good, <laughs> and a few scenes she's in, um, the movie mainly starts out with this chain kind of mechanism, which this guy has to escape through by literally ripping out the chains, and you might be thinking, that can make you lose a lot of blood, and you'll just die, <laughs> there's no lesson, to be learned with that, there's nothing to really gain from that, and yeah, that's a theme with this movie. Um, like I said, Detective Carrie gets put into this trap where she has, has like something stuff in her ribs and she has to break out of this, and by the time she gets it unlocked, it doesn't unlock, so she ends up dying anyway. Would you want me to say, yeah, that's not, you're not going to escape from that trap. <laughs> there is no way you can. And you're right, yeah, because most of the traps, well, all of the traps in this movie, because Jigsaw is dying, is done by Amanda. Which, let's talk about Amanda for a second in this movie. I really like her. <laughs> I think she's really great in this film. She is definitely leaning in the full psychopath. She has gone down that crazy road route that John Kramer has gone down. And she plays the role very well. She does a really good job. I think it's Shawnee Smith, I believe. I don't know. No, it's, pretty, it's not that. But anyway. I put up the name here. She's great in this. I thought she was really, really good. Um, she has some great, a great monologue towards the end, which I really did. Like, she's definitely struggling with killing throughout this movie. She's having a problem with it because she knows she's doing it. And then it gets to a point where she just doesn't care anymore and just does it without even playing the game while making a way for you to escape. So it makes for an interesting character arc where Jigsaw's main disciple, at least for now, has gone down this murderous path, which you wouldn't expect them to go down. Not everyone has Jigsaw's crazy mind or his sadistic ways, the way he does, where he just thinks like, oh, I'm not the bad guy. <laughs> they kill themselves, it's fine. No, you're a killer, my guy. <laughs> you do that. You don't do anything good. <laughs> so, it makes sense, and it makes sense why Amanda would go down this path. So I really liked her here. I thought she was actually one of my favorite parts of the film. And then we got the characters of Jeff and Lynn. Now, Jeff, I genuinely really liked. I really enjoyed his portrayal in this movie. 
he was definitely your typical grieving father, but his road to forgiveness throughout this movie was good because at first he's like, I'm not gonna save you, you need all this stuff, and then he actually tries to save these people because deep down he is a good person. Up until the ending of the movie, where he makes the worst mistake I think in this entire series so far. He literally just kills him. <laughs> he, he just, it's terrible. Anyway, so he's great. And I like the traps that we come upon. Um, there's one trap where the bystanders is basically freezing to death, and it's a really gruesome trap. And the second one is the lawyer, not the lawyer, it was the judge getting covered in pig guts, which is more funny to me than it is like torture has I mean it would be torture if you're in that situation that would be awful but it was funny I don't know why I just thought it was hilarious um then we get to the ending of this which I forgot what the traps called of the drunk driver that is insane <laughs> that is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life I don't even know if they built that or there's some of that was CGI I don't even know what this movie could afford CGI but it was good I really like that trap a lot and his character arc's great here, even though he kind of screws it up at the end. Lynn in this, who is basically there to operate on John Kramer. She's very good in this movie too. She really does sell this role very well. She feels kind of dead inside, very empty. Of course, it's a feeling you would have after losing your son. So she does a great job in this movie. I really enjoy her a lot here. Um, and John Kramer himself, Tobin Bell, he has made, he has the easiest job in this movie. Not the easiest. The easiest job was in the first movie, where he just had to lay in the middle of the floor all the time. Here, his job is pretty easy. He lays in the bed, he monologues, he talks about how smart he is, and how he's going to outsmart everybody. Which makes sense. It's it's honestly really enjoyable watching um, Tobin Bell here. I thought he was great. He does a really good job. Really enjoy his performance here. And, yeah. So, let's get into the ending of this movie. Which, up until this point, I like this film a lot. It felt very, like, final finality? I don't even know if it's the right word. Um, but it felt very... Like, I felt very satisfied with this at the ending. Where we're ending this with John Kramer and Amanda being our main characters here. With the other people involved being also likable. So I like that a lot. The movie, while being very tor torture-heavy was I was on board with it then the ending happened and oh yes Amanda does give a great monologue at the end what really gets me with this ending is we have Jeff who is has the opportunity to forgive the jigsaw's like hey forgive me learn in your heart to forgive me and then I will call the amp call the police here in the ambulance I'll get the thing off your wife's your wife's neck which is also connected to his heart rate. So if he dies, she dies. And yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and you're like, okay, yeah, this is going to be a very kind of sentimental, interesting ending. But no, Saul has to have his twist. <laughs> so with the ending to this one, God, it's so stupid. So he goes up to John. He's like, okay, I forgive you. You're fine. And then right when you think the movie's going to end and everything's going to be fine, he whips out that chainsaw and cuts his neck, so John Kramer's dead. Him being dead, his wife's dead. Then we get a little voice monitor thing where John Kramer's like, Just in a contingency plan, I have your daughter, and I'm the only one who knows where she is. And of course, you end this with the whole no, you know, like all the Saw movies do. Uh, this is where I really start feeling fatigued. They didn't have to do this kind of ending. They could have made this interesting. And if you kept John Kramer alive, which I feel like was a massive mistake these movies made, I don't know why the filmmakers did this, like, this other than shock value, or to just end this off, I'm like, oh, what's going to happen next, you know? No, they shouldn't have killed him off. And they shouldn't have done it in such a stupid way to where it just it's such a weak ending for John Kramer as a character, because you... Well, yeah, he shows up in these movies, but it just gets more insane. And with this one, just three movies in, his contingency plans are bullshit. <laughs> um, just like his methods are. Because his plans in this movie, to where he's just like, oh, I have a plan for you. If this doesn't work, I have a plan for this and this and this. I was like, how? For one, you have cancer, my guy. Why aren't you focusing on that? For two, all, like, why are you focusing on all these people? For two... How do you plan ahead this far? You can't be that smart, you know? Oh, how- and plus, how did he kidnap the daughter? 
How did that happen? Did Amanda just do it? Does she know about this plan? Because she didn't know they were husband and wife, apparently, according to John Kramer in this movie. So, you don't... <laughs> it's just stupid. <laughs> it's just dumb. Which might be like, ah, that's kind of, you know, part of the course with Saw and all these movies. And no, because the first one was smart. <laughs> the first one... Well, yeah, there was some dumb stuff like Bob Zeb and why was he there and the key going on the drain. It's just like, yeah, okay, <laughs> that's fine. But the movie was smart. The second one was just dumb fun. This movie, I just didn't like watching it. <laughs> and, and especially, like, I was having a good enough time with it in the beginning to where I don't hate this movie. I think it's fine. But the ending really does ruin this one a lot. And it takes it down much further than what it could have been. This could have been a very emotional impactful film that could have been very culminative to the Saw franchise but it ended up just being a weak ass finale to these first three films to where yeah going to the fourth I'm very fatigued <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna and I have what like seven more of these to go god help my soul <laughs> um but yeah let's talk about some good stuff in this again the performances here they're great they really are good and the sets are also very good the traps while being much more torturesque are also great i really enjoyed those a lot it's just yeah this is not a good finale to these movies and well it probably wasn't intended to be a finale for being completely honest it just doesn't really work for me also we see a character named hoffman in the beginning of this movie you might be like why is he here and why is he getting lines well he becomes one of the most idiotic characters in this series at least from what i remember from these movies so that's going to be fun going into a Saw 4. Also, I know I've brought, I watched the unrated cuts of the first two movies. I was going to with this one. It was 2 hours and 27 minutes. No, <laughs> I was not doing that. Slide is watching the theatrical cut. I'm not watching a 2 hour and 27 minute Saw movie. You can just go to hell with that. <laughs> I don't know why they would I mean yeah, I get adding extra footage, flushing characters out. That's great. But two hours and 30 something minutes, uh, no, I'm not doing that. I don't love Saw that much, so, to do that. But anyway, for that being said, I'll probably give Saw 3, I'll give this like a C, 